the Rite of Spring is 100 years old this year. Uh, but my God, is it still a kicking, pushing, violent, extraordinary teenager. It's a piece that doesn't seem to get old. I mean, of course, people play it more easily than in the days when orchestral musicians talked about it, taking people to the, the verge of nervous collapse. But it is still what, as what Stravinsky said, it is like the earth cracking open in spring. And it is a new way of writing for the orchestra. It's a new way of writing rhythms, a way of writing music that even puzzled Stravinsky because he never felt that he wrote this in the same way that he constructed his other pieces. He said, I'm the vessel through which the sacra passed. And he felt, I think, as though he had received the music almost by automatic writing. And so the famous last dance in which every bar is a different time signature, he was not able to know how to notate it. He could write down all the notes but he had absolutely no idea where the bar lines would go. And it's absolutely fascinating to see him trying to find, well, how do I make this comprehensible to anybody? Now, for an orchestra that will happily drive off a cliff with, uh, with a huge truck while they're playing, this piece is a gift. Because in a way, we say to the Philharmonic, OK, just for once in your life, there's a license to kill. The Rite of Spring is still as radical and surprising as it, and extraordinary as it was on the day it was written, which is very rare in music. And for us to bring on tour the first symphony of Schumann, the Spring Symphony, the other great work written about spring, which is entirely its opposite in every way the right of spring is to do with violence and destruction and sacrifice and pulling apart. The first symphony of Schumann is to do with the coming of spring, with love, with community, with humour, with warmth. Somehow they make very good bad fe fellows. They might fight like hell with each other, but they are a wonderful pair together. And in the middle, we've programmed with our, one of our great concert masters, Daishin Kashimoto, the first concerto of Prokofiev. Now, this must have been a very, very different Russia than the Russia Stravinsky came out of. It's only three years later, it's hard to imagine, because it is one of the most romantic, tuneful, warm, funny pieces imaginable and it will be fascinating for us also to hear the Prokofiev and the Stravinsky paired together it just shows what was going on in this incredible crucible of the time around the first world war what a time to be a composer <laughs>